Hello again, statisticians. Uh, back here with the second probability lesson. Uh, this one's on two-way tables, which are also known as contingency tables. Um, and two-way tables here uh, look like this, where there's uh, there's a variable here. Um, call this variable one or variable two. I might call this variable two here, actually, since the student's age would be, technically be kind of like the X here and the breakfast or no breakfast would be the Y. Um, not that we look at that completely here, but that's if we're looking at a cause-effect relationship, that's what we'd be talking about here. Um, on the edges here, we have the marginal distributions. Um, these are the sums of the rows and the columns like we saw in the chi-square unit. And then there's 90 overall individuals in this, in this data set. Um, so when we look at what probability questions might be asked about this, um, it could be something as simple as what's the the fraction of 10 to 13 year olds out of the total group here, which of course would just be the 54 out of 90. Um, it could be the uh, fraction who skip breakfast, which would be the 38 out of 90. Um, it could be uh, an and question, 13, uh, 10 to 13 and each breakfast, which would be the 40 out of the 90. Uh, it could be an or question, which we'll get into a little later. There's a little more work in that. Or it could be what's called a conditional question, where we are not talking about the 90, but just saying of the 10 to 13 year olds, uh, what fraction eat breakfast? And so it'd be out of the 54, it's 40 of them who eat breakfast. So we'll talk about all these. Um, so here's just a couple examples right out of the gate. So we talked about this 10 to 13 year olds here. So we look at the 10 to 13 year olds, the 40 and the 14, so that's the 54 out of 90. So this answer is truly just 54 out of 90. And you can certainly make that a fractional, excuse me, a, a decimal from there if you want to. So 54 out of 90 would be a, a 0.6, or you could say 60%, however you wanted to put that would be just fine. Um, skipping breakfast, so skipping breakfast would be the 43 here out of 90, so this would be a 43 out of 90, um, and 43 out of 90 then is a um, 0.4, it's actually 0.47 repeating, so it would be equals 0.47 repeating, which is approximately 47.8%. Um, 10 to 13 and skip breakfast, and so we've got 10 to 13 here, we've got skip breakfast here. So that would bring us right to this 14. So that would be the 14 out of 90. So that means we just meet both of the requirements here. It's still out of the whole group. Um, so we'd have a 14 out of 90, which is equal to 0.15 repeating, or approximately 15.6%. Um, this can build up a little bit. Here's the conditional probabilities. Um, so now we read this vertical line as given, and that's the, given the certain condition. So in this case, we'd read it as the probability that one skips breakfast given that they're age 14 to 17. So that just means when we have a given there, this, this is truly a vertical line. It's not a fraction bar, but it almost reads that way where given 14 to 17 means out of the 36, 14 to 17 year olds, skip breakfast accounts for out of those 36, 24 of them. Okay, so that equals 0.6 repeating, or approximately 66.7% um, in that group. And then age 10 to 13, given that they eat breakfast. So obviously here we've flip-flopped the variables. Um, so it's really kind of given the Y, what are the chances of the X, which you see a lot here. We'll see that with three diagrams as well. Um, but we say now, given that you've eaten breakfast, hopefully you look at that and think, okay, that's out of these 47 here. Oops. Can't get there, there we go. So out of the, here one second. Out of the 47, um, age 10 to 13 would be 40 of them. Okay, so that's 40 out of 47 there. And again, just on a conditional probability here. So 40 out of 47 is oops, approximately 0.8511, which is again 85.11%. Again, fraction, decimal, or percent here works just fine. Um, and that would give us give us our, our answer. Now, one thing to note here is uh, when I note the idea of um, fraction, decimal, or percent being just fine, that is all assuming that you have written your probability statement. OK, 
Okay, so even if a question asks in a sentence or in a question, what's the probability that somebody is 10 to 13 given that they've eaten breakfast? You would still want to write this notation with your answer rather than simply writing a fraction 40 out of 47 in the middle of nowhere. Okay, this has no context to it. You need to give it some context and talk about what it is relating to. Um, so being able to write out these probability statements is certainly more important than you know, picking a fraction, a decimal, or a percent in terms of how you're going to write your final answer. Okay. Um, a big thing that comes with the two-way tables and is a part of almost any question that's been asked on past AP exams with FRQs and two-way tables, um, if it's not chi-square, well, I guess if it's chi-square as well, but it's a little different format. So in chi-square tests, we have run with this a chi-square test for independence. Okay, and what that does is it tests this, and of course you get the p-value, and it might not be perfect, okay, um, but the p-value gives us a range to really detect that depend if it's not independent, and a p-value of one in a chi-square test for independence would actually show that it's perfectly independent, okay, that if 45% of the population is Democrat, then that means it was 45% of males and 45% of females. That would be gender and and political preference are completely independent. And then anything less than one would show some level of dependence. And again, we'd look for something less than 0.05. Well, in this unit, we're checking for independence, but we're really looking for any situation that's the p-value would be less than one. So it's not that we have statistically significant evidence. We are actually testing in this unit for true independence. Okay, and true independence would mean here that if 54 out of 90 are in are in the 10 to 13 age group, okay, 54 out of 90 is um, is 60 percent. So that would mean this should be 60 percent of this, and this should be 60 percent of this. Okay, now clearly that's not the case here. So these aren't perfectly independent. So we would answer in this case, no, they're not independent. Now, how do we show that? There's a couple of different ways to show that. Um, one here is through this little multiplication. Okay, and this multiplication, and this one, so I won't go into it, but this multiplication is essentially saying that A and B could be any one of these variables, really. Um, and so probably the, the, the one that we'd use based on this bottom one here is that, uh, that A would be one of the top ones, okay, and B would be one of these. So it might be the probability that somebody eats breakfast and is 10 to 13, Okay, and we would be seeing if that equals the, the product of their individual probabilities. And then the second one here is that the probability given a second event, excuse me, given a preceding event, is equal to that probability alone. And for instance, the probability of rolling a 6, given that you just rolled a 6, is the same as the probability of just rolling a 6. Okay, so those are equal because flipping a, excuse me, rolling a die is truly an independent event from one to the next. Uh, just like the probability of getting a heads when you flip a coin, given that you've just flipped a tails, is the same as the probability of flipping a heads. Okay, so since those are equal, that again shows true independence, and we're used to flipping a coin or rolling a die as being true independent events. So these, these here, the answer would be yes, they're independent. Um, but now let's look into the situation here, if I have it, I do have it set up here that we're getting. And this is the common sort of question is you get a two-way table and it asks, are the events of your age and whether or not you eat breakfast, are these two truly independent? So let's look at the first one here. So on the previous slide, I said that this would be the A and this would be the B. The reason I said that is because of this actually given, it's more likely to say breakfast given age than age given breakfast. Um, but let's look at this first one. Okay, so let's say this is the probability that somebody eats breakfast and is 10 to 13. So if they were independent, then that should equal the probability that somebody eats breakfast times the probability that they're 10 to 13. Okay, and so the probability that we just would find these individual probabilities. Okay, so when we look at this, eating breakfast and being 10 to 13... That's 40 out of 90, okay? So this here is 40 out of 
90. And again, we're checking, is that equal to their individual, the product of their individual probabilities? So eating breakfast is 47 out of 90. Let's say 47 out of 90 multiplied by the probability of being 10 to 13, which is 54 out of 90. Okay, so it would be easier probably to convert all of these to decimals. So again, 0.4 repeating, and we've got 47 divided by 90 is 0.5 and then 2 repeats. And then 54 out of 90, which is the 0 0.6, 0. Okay, we multiply 0 0.60 times 0 0.5 and then a bunch of 2s, and that gives us... That, sorry, that gives us the uh, product of 0.313 approximately, which of course is not equal to 0.44, so therefore not independent. And we would give a little explanation here and say because, the, because this isn't equal to begin with, then we know that they are not independent. And we just write that in a single sentence would be just fine. Okay, so that's one way to show it. Probably the easier way to show it is this second way. And I'll do this in a different color just to separate it out a little bit. Okay, oh, that's a little too light. Oh, that's too light as well. Let's see. Um, let's make that a little darker. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so... Oh, not much better. So probability of A given B. So let's now say eat breakfast given 10 to 13, okay, which again is A and B here. So this is A given B. Does that equal the probability of eating breakfast? So what we're really checking here is does the fact that you're 10 to 13 change the probability that you're eating breakfast? Okay, and that's that's uh, the notion of independence, because if your age affects or impacts your probability of eating breakfast, then we're saying, well, your uh, the probability of eating breakfast is dependent on your age, okay? So if younger elementary students are more likely to eat breakfast than older students, high school students or something, then we'd say age is influencing your eating breakfast. So when we look at this, probability that we eat breakfast, given that we are 10 to 13, is 40 out of 54. Okay, that's again, out of the 10 to 13 year olds, how many eat breakfast? 40 of them. Okay, does that equal, oops, I forgot the question mark up here. Does that equal the probability that somebody eats breakfast? Well, the probability that somebody eats breakfast is 47 out of 90. Okay, so what we're saying here is in general, the probability that somebody eats breakfast is 52% roughly. Okay, this is 0.52 repeating. So overall, in this whole sample, 52% of people eat breakfast. But if you are in the younger age group, there's actually a 74%, it's 0.740 repeating, chance that you eat breakfast. Clearly, these two are not equal. And what we're seeing here is the younger students here eat breakfast at a much higher rate than the group overall. And that was a result of the fact that only 33% of the older group ate breakfast, and so they brought this percentage down. So again, therefore not independent. These, the, the left side and the right side here, they're showing the exact same thing, just two different ways. Both of them are there to show that things are not independent here. And really, I think this way, the, the second way, is the easier one to see, because you're really seeing that, that a characteristic is influencing the probability. And, and in, the, in the real world right now, we see that a lot with you know, characteristics based on demographic. Does that change the probability that you have something else or do something else or feel a certain way or act a certain way, whatever it happens to be? Um, so to conclude here, what I would say is um, I do this, show this work okay, that we have right here, and I would say because the probability of eating breakfast, given that you're 10 to 13, does not equal the probability of just eating breakfast in general, we know that these two events are not independent. And then you'd conclude. Alrighty, we'll leave it at that and see you again with the next lesson, uh, probability lesson number three.